Ocean Mike welcomes everybody to a new episode of Fish of the Day. Today's episode is brought to us by Bug. Thank you, Bug, for your awesome suggestion. And that suggestion being coral. We're going to be talking a little bit about how coral works, and I'm going to list off a couple of interesting species, ones that I like at least. So, coral, they grow by creating little polyps, which are like little indents in their body, which then continue to grow and grow and grow and more and more, almost like honeycomb-like structures, except they're much smaller. And those structures serve as shelter for coral's greatest ally, a type of zooplankton called zoanthalia. And that zoanthalia and the coral have a symbiotic relationship. The coral relies on the zoanthalia for food and, well, energy, because they don't eat them, of course. And the zoanthalia rely on the coral for shelter. They use those little polyps as shelter. And so the zoanthalia, they use photosynthesis, which is using the sun as a f source of keeping themselves alive and maintaining energy and producing energy. So they do this with photosynthesis, and they release some of that energy which is then consumed by the coral in each of those polyps. And on with millions of those little zoanthalia all across the coral, the coral is able to sustain itself. So that is how they also maintain their color. Coral without the uh, zooplankton do not have any color. That's why when coral die, they're all bleached and completely like stark white. So. Coral's color is determined by the type of zooanthalia that live in them, as well as the photosynthesis type of energy that they regulate. So one of my favorite species is called brain coral. Much like the name, they grow themselves to be very stout and have lots of folds, much like a brain. They also can take different colors, sometimes red, sometimes greens, but they usually go for a more red or in that spectrum of colors. So I think that's very interesting. So that is the main gist of how corals stay alive. They do primarily keep themselves like they very they live a very sedimentary lifestyle. However there are some that are capable of slight movement, which is very interesting. Smaller species of coral are capable of lifting their dorsal plate moving a little bit as well as some anemones it's interesting yeah and so that's pretty cool and at certain points in their lives they attempt to do reproducing and they reproduce through mass reproduction some species of coral do this by like at once all species of coral or at least all of that species of coral produce at once and this is called um broadcast spawning, which increases the rate of successful reproduction as what they do is they do a budding process. So like little bits of uh, material concentrate on certain parts of the um, coral and then it detaches along with reproductive materials in order to mix them all together and start creating a new polyp, which will then grow into its own coral. It is a difficult process as not all of them survive. However, the broadcast spawning does greatly increase the chances. So that is all on tonight's agenda. Am I missing anything, Big Blue Fish? That's right. Big Blue Fish says, tonight we have an offender, an imposter, if you will. That one being puking chicken face. He is being condemned today. Pit of death moment. We're sending him to the depths of the Mariana Trench all the way to Challenger Deep where he will remain there very cold and very wet. I feel no remorse. This had its, this was coming. This is a long time of coming. So, pit of death. Ocean Mike, otherwise, says this has been a great episode, so feel free to leave suggestions anytime. Um, 
yeah, I hope you guys are staying safe, having a great summer so far, doing fun things with your families and friends. So like always, enjoy the rest of your day, stay safe, leave suggestions, and see you later, fishy friends. <laughs>